get dark, girl. Yes, let's not forget microphone. Hi, microphone. I think I like it. Um, holding it, if I had like a tiny little table to put it in front of me, I would. So how are you guys? I didn't think I was going to be posting a talking video. My plan was to post a uh, delicate dark girl video. So that's the ones where it's like music and I don't talk. Because I've had this one song stuck in my head. But I'll save it for another time. If you watch my personal channel, you'll know that I am, well I was, trying out different rooms. Depending on the time of day I'm able to film. Oh shit, One Tree Hill. Not that making a comeback. That was my dad. If you were a teen or young adult in the early 2000s, I was both of those things. I was moving through the 2000s. As a, I started as a preteen, went to be a teen, and then I was the adult. So, But um, I think that show started, what, 2002, 2003 or something? You would have been locked in on that show. Like that was one of the many shows where you just locked in that one I love that um I loved one-on-one -on -one. I watched one-on-one -on -one all the time that one was a good early 2000s show anyway so I don't know but um get in here so slowly Beep. so whoop, whoop. I'm watching somebody named Cass K this is my first time seeing them but I stopped here because I said starting my NYC corporate job. I just wanted to watch it. Um, this is just SPF BFF by Milani. SPF 30 primer. It's got SPF. Yeah, I just am really into watching them like starting their careers and stuff. She is making tacos. For some reason, watching them do it in New York, I think growing up in the 90s or maybe even the 80s and obviously now New York held like a really like interesting place in some people so for me example it wasn't somewhere I ever wanted to live but I was still fascinated by it from afar but I used to think that was so interesting and so, yeah, I like watching. I watch another girl named Leanne Yomo. I watched her start her job also in New York. Oh, this needs to be sharp and duh. Just because I haven't done it in a while, it feels like. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't even know if that's thin enough. I'm going to make them thinner. Eyebrows. Done. Not as... thin as I wanted them to be, but... I guess they're as thin as they're going to get. <coughs> I used to watch these compilation videos of people talking about a certain issue or like people stitching a video. And I just can't do it anymore. I can't. It's, it has become so, it felt like toxic. The issues that get talked about the most are when you can, like, shit on something. And I think it's because otherwise, culture, I think American culture, um, we think if you talk too much about a good thing, you're bragging. Um, that's what it seems like. And it's not like a staple and everyone doesn't feel that way, obviously. American internet, I should say, which is a whole different, like, microbiome <laughs> you talk especially when it comes to relationships like relationships if you're not talking shit about a relationship it doesn't seem to get as much traction i also noticed a lot of happy couples don't like 
um, sharing their business. And it's probably because people can take things and misconstrue them or start to like question what's going on. People can take that how they want. I've literally heard someone, a married lady being like, her business, her marriage and stuff, like what goes on in her marriage is her business and that's why she does not share it or make it like a part of her channel. And people legit told her like it's because not everyone most people were like oh that's good for you you know keep your marriage to yourself but other people were like you know basically doubting that her marriage was as good as she said it was or as healthy as she said it was because she won't talk about it and i was just kind of like you know in this age of overexposure i feel like maybe she's a scorpio <laughs> an October Scorpio as interesting as those stories are and as helpful as they can be because you know they can help people it can feel cathartic like oh, I am not alone when I went through this bullshit like I feel like that's why those videos are important to show people they're not alone to show people you can get out to show people this is what maybe you can do too like this is how you can figure out oh no I am not tripping this person is manipulating me you have to know where you are in life when you watch those videos and you have to have I think a solid mindset around what it is you're seeing. I think they're good for a time and a place, but I can't keep watching them just because I feel like I'm not in the place where I need to anymore. Um, and the videos just, they feel really, they just don't feel like they're for me anymore. There's a time and a place for everything. Like just because you don't necessarily agree with the video or you feel like it's saying a certain thing that you think is um, too negative or something like that, it probably just means that you don't need to be there for it. <laughs> Bro, my phone is off, off. My phone is off, off. I'm getting lost. <laughs> I'm getting lo this makeup is getting lost in translation. Man, yeah, that was it. I used to watch those compilation videos. And I was just getting really sad. Like, hmm. I just want people to find peace and leave other people alone. Like the way people are out here terrorizing motherfuckers, like. They need need to just be at settle, settle, settle with themselves what the chaos is for. Like, why are you so hell-bent on, like, bringing chaos into somebody's life? The person who did this to you should be thrown in an icy river, you know what I mean? Like, I am dead serious, and it's not a good look. It's not a good, not for the person talking. It's not a good look for the person who did this to them. The person talking isn't doing anything wrong by talking. You know, like the blanket generalizations that happen in a lot of these videos. Because the person has been through something enough times to see a pattern. So most of the time when people talk, they talk like, is the word hyper, hyperbolically? Hyperbolic chamber. But they talk in hyperbole. They talk in grand terms and a lot of these grand terms sometimes include like always or just blanketing like an entire demographic and stuff like that but you know they don't mean every single person because they haven't met every single person but i know it's very dangerous to talk in generalizations but oh apple tea because all the influencers are romanticizing materialism and encouraging overconsumption culture and people say things like that, and I think they're partially right. The nuance is that people who are influencers, their whole their whole game is marketing. Being an influencer is being a marketer or a salesperson. That's how a lot of them make most of their money. And um, because of that, you're going to get a lot of product. When you do marketing, you're going to get a lot of product. None of them do it. I'm not going to say none of them, but here we go with the generalizations. Um, a lot of them don't do it properly, I think. I think they don't control their PR lists because they like getting free stuff. They don't know how to properly say no and really 
vet the materials that they're supposedly standing by. And I think a lot of people would be less upset with them if it wasn't always them trying to push something new. Basically, people are tired of watching commercials. That's it. Or a, but again, most people, I don't think they realize it, but a lot of people, they, first thing they attack when they talk about influencers are women influencers who um, are marketing skincare and beauty products. But I see the same thing with the men influencers that um, do things for tech. The amount of gadgetry that they push, like, you know, no one ever talks about that side. It's always an attack on like the beauty and skincare realm. And I think because people are saying it's more popular, but I mean, the tech people on YouTube anyway, I don't know about TikTok, but the tech people on YouTube, they've been in the millions when it comes to subscribers way longer than most beauty creators. And they have been getting like every new release, all these different kinds of gadgets. Some of them even get sponsored with like cars, you know, so I'm just like, I want to hear it, but I also don't want to hear it because people aren't making the, the conversation big enough like it's not inclusive enough to all the different areas in which this overconsumption uh trend of marketing is you know being um showcased i don't know how else to put this like sometimes you know sometimes your brain is ready for the soapbox and other times it's tired i think i want to go down but part of me wants to go up I'm gonna go up. Always comes out a little better than this one. So that's that one. There's this one. And now I have to somehow make them match. And now, first of all, you need to be closer than this. Mm. See, that one looks a little more like it's following my eye line. This one looks like it's interrupting it. Oh, it got worse. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Again, I'm listening to a playlist by The Moon and the Girl. It's called Playlist. Cafe emotional so excuse me. Cafe emotional songs that customers always ask for the song. Okay. Look, we're all out of smoke. I'm running out of steam fast. <gasps> what? What's ha what's happening? What? What is happening today? Okay. Oh, my goodness. That was a roller coaster. And this is just as good as it gets before I damage it some more. But uh, let's move on, please. Two different nine lines. As usual. I thought today was the day that I wouldn't do that. Okay, you can see taking it over like this. Let's move into my Laced with Cherry palette. I got it at Blurred Con last year. It was in Virginia. Did a little traveling overnight stay to Virginia. It has a little mirror inside. These are the colors. Laced with cherry. This is the wanted palette, I believe. All the mattes are at the bottom, and then you have regular shimmers, and then you have pressed glitters. I really like the mattes and the shimmers in here.
I'm going to use this that I use on my lip. It is an eye pencil after all. And we're just going to get in here and we're going to draw. I don't know, but let's keep going. We're going to do our mascara for the top. Come down and go up. Oh my gosh. Sometimes my makeup is just messy. I've got mascara on my eye eyeshadow now. It's clumping weirdly on this side because of the eyeliner that got in my eyelashes. This is all I can do about these eyes, ma'am. These are my janky eyes. Messy eyes, messy prize. <laughs> Big thighs, messy eyes. Back. I've been doing this for an hour. <laughs> I have to hurry up because this is at three minutes. Just gonna do my regular foundation, Juvia's Place in Angola 140. And then just. Spread it down and around. There you go. I'm done. <laughs> 